Want to see something really cool? <laughs> this is the Moloculus 1898, model 1898. Um, it is an optical ray gun um, that we made about five years ago for John Favreau as a spec piece. The movie was never made. I don't know if it ever even made it into <laughs> John Favreau's hands. Um, but uh, it is a, a gorgeous little piece of engineering and uh, we're gonna be making a case for it. Also, uh, there are some applications in this piece to escape room stuff. We'll tell you about that as we go. This thing has an LED package inside. It's got an electronics Aha. package in, in the pew accumulator, which is this portion right here. Um, pew pew. This trigger mechanism, when installed, has brush connectors on it, so all of these parts communicate with each other and make the weapon function like it's a real weapon. So when you pull the trigger, it fires off the light package. The reason we did that for movies is because it's very easy to make a beam come out of the end of a gun in post effects in a movie. It is difficult to light up all of the optics and make that look real. Um, so we, we cheated and we made the op optics actually light up on their own so that all you have to do when you're editing your movie is make the beam come out the end. Okay, so we're gonna make a bunch of different parts for it and we're gonna make a, a sniper case where the whole thing breaks down. That's the whole purpose of this point, uh, of, this, of this gun, is that it breaks down into logical field strip components that snap together really quickly and function and we'll show you all of that as we go. Hey, look, it's Preston. Uh, our old magazine, the Leyden Charger, was this weird little apparatus that w didn't have a quick disconnect, and we never liked that about it. So we're gonna remake it. And um, uh, Preston is going to use this bayonet-style connector uh, to adapt a brass compression fitting uh, for a quick-release magazine, the Leyden Charger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a like you said, it's a brass compress compression fitting. I'm going to mill out the inside on our lathe to accept this copper fitting as an end piece and then drill out holes to put pins and solder them in place to accept into our HPLV bayonet fitting. I'm going to show you that. Now, if any of y'all are familiar with plumbing and brazing, this is uh, what I'm doing. This is just a hollow brass pipe with a fitting on the top of it. This is supposed to be a compression piece. And I've simply drilled two holes on either side here, inserted my two brass pins, heated it up, as you saw, and then put the solder on the inside so as not to show through on the outside since this will be a hero piece. So here it is, right after coming off of the lathe. What I've gone ahead and done is milled out the center and these raised portions here for visual interest, just to make them brighter than the rest of it. And I milled out the inside here to accept our copper fitting to where it's nice and snug and stops so that when we put on our cap, we have a nice, aesthetically pleasing magazine for our rifle. So here we have the case for the gun that we're making. You can see it's just a plywood box right now. We've got it sitting on top of this leather piece. We're gonna be, uh, or I'm gonna be wrapping it today. You can see I've already cut out some of the sections here and there. It's going to just get wrapped over, tucked in, and stapled just like, just like you were doing upholstery, really. This leather that we're using, this is actually, it's like an oil-soaked pig leather and it's really, really great for getting a nice weathered, distressed finish on it. It looks terrific, but it's soaked with oil. And we are using contact cement, some uh, barge contact cement, to affix the leather to the box. And one thing that Mark and I noticed yesterday was the cement was applied to the leather pretty much as you would expect contact cement to be applied, 
but as you started working it and it started getting thicker, it started peeling off the leather and we were kind of worried that it may not have the adhesion that we want. But with this and that, it seems to, it seems to be sticking fairly well. But one thing we're gonna try is we're gonna try to use this sandpaper to maybe rough up the back of the leather and see if, see if maybe that adds a little bit of a adhesion that we didn't get yesterday. So uh, throwing signs at the wall here, we'll see what sticks. Ha <laughs> ha! See, it's barge cement. I said we're gonna, I'm gonna get to it. I'm not sure we've actually said this out loud yet, but when using any kind of contact cement, you really do have to do both sides. You may think, oh, it's gonna touch when it goes together anyway, but that's really not the same thing. It's almost like there's a reason why it's called contact cement. Yeah, we, we learned that one through a fail several years ago that you actually have to do both sides. In attaching these, I started in the middle and I'm working outboard uh, like you would do if you were stretching a canvas. Largely because I, I used to do that for a living, so it just kind of comes natural. Um, but it's a good way to, you get your tension point in the center and then you can work all your slack out towards the, the sides instead of starting at one side and then you end up getting a huge bubble on the other. Now one thing you may not think about but is good to keep in mind so we're using a pneumatic stapler and depending on how hard you press on one of these you might just go straight through whatever you're trying to staple so there's just a little bit of finesse involved with this So we just finished up with the top and the bottom. We just got the sides wrapped and it's all upholstered on the inside like we said we were going to do. Now we're just going to nip the corners here to even up the seams and work on our corner pieces. Now we have these rectangular pieces that are just going to go in the corner. They're going to wrap around and we're going to use brass tacks, just those furniture tacks, and put them in along with our brass corner pieces. Now this is the top right here. This is going to go on the bottom, but because this is the orientation I have, this is what you get to watch. So on this, uh, this raw leather, and this is just a straight cowhide. If you look at the bottom here, there's all this fuzz that kind of sticks out the bottom. Uh, it's because the bottom is just basically suede. So there's a tool called a skiving knife. That's this guy right here. And uh, we will use that to bevel the back edge and dress this so that you don't see that fuzz sticking out uh, where, the, where the leather meets the case or where this leather meets this leather. So I'm gonna show you that now.
I'm using uh, contact cement to put these together. Uh, normally, if you're going to put this is a this is urethane uh, expanded urethane board of uh, ren shape or sign foam. That's what this is. So it is a, a pretty high density urethane foam that we use for milling pieces out of. Um, the best way to put this stuff together is with Gorilla Glue, and you use the water and everything. Read the instructions in the Gorilla Glue. Um, if uh, I'm using contact cement because it's faster and because I'm not going to have to sand between layers. If I was doing a multiple layer sandwich and I was going to sand them, the, the contact cement is like rubber when it's, when it's dry and it doesn't sand. So you end up with these ridges everywhere you have a seam. That's terrible. In this application, it doesn't matter. So that's what we're doing. So here I am. This is the sign foam that you've seen milled already, this pink sign foam. What we've done is we've taken some green felt and laid it into all the channels. And then above that, we put this one solid layer of green felt on top of it using contact cement. Now what I'm doing is I'm using just a utility knife razor and I'm going through and cutting into these channels and then just refining the edges here so that we have both the channel inside and then the surface covered with this foam. Now this foam, this foam, this felt is going to act as a padding so that when we put our pieces into here, it gets a nice cushion when the whole case is shut up and buttoned up. On top of this green felt, we've actually got some green velvet. I think it's like some crushed green velvet that's going to drape on top of this whole thing. So you won't actually see any of the felt in the finished product. This is all just gonna be for padding and filler. Once the green velvet goes on top of it, that's what you got. <laughs> we finished on time. And, Barely, uh, <laughs> but yes. Matt's going to show you how we field strip this guy. First, we close the secondary focus chamber. Then we fire it dangerously in a random direction. No. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, magazine better, change. Better sound effect than that. Magazine change. Is green the anti-material or anti-personnel round? It's anti-personnel, okay, so it will be put on the anti-material round. So really proud of this thing. This, that was definitely a team effort that came out really damn well. Anyway, field stripping. Step one, remove the source of ammunition <laughs> for safety. Claps. Yes. This is the objective ranging aperture. Remove the pew accumulator and the primary focus chamber. Pew accumulator, primary focus chamber. <clears throat> Ignore that, I gotta fix that still. <laughs> the uh, front assembly retaining pin. Up and center. It comes off. We've already removed the ammunition. Then the trigger pops out, goes in his little bed. And the stock. Fit for traveling. It smells really good. You, you can't see that, or you can't, you, <laughs> no, you can't see that. Next up, smell a vision. <laughs> if. Um, like and subscribe, we'll be doing more weird stuff. With more leather smell. We'll rub leather all over the lens for you. It's a thing. Has it gotten weird yet? Not weird enough.